president of Aluminum Tank and Tank Accessories. Over the years, we've had a lot of requests for an instructional video on how to install a fuel tank. Today, we're going to be installing a 60WX or 60 gallon extreme wedge into a 2013 Ford F250. We'll be installing this using the Freedom Fuel Auxiliary Fuel System. We wanted to show this video showing you how easy it is to install a fuel tank to your truck. Anybody with basic mechanical skills can install a fuel tank to your truck. The first step you need to do when installing a fuel tank is fill out your warranty card. Without a warranty card, there is no warranty. Now when we're doing the fuel tank, the first thing you need to do is figure out where do you want your gauge. Our, our, the Freedom Fill Auxiliary System comes with the gauge and switch bracket just like you see here with an optional suction cup to mount to the windshield. In this truck, the customer has chosen to actually have it inside the center console. So we'll be mounting inside the center console for this customer. Since we're installing our gauge and switch pod inside the center console, the first step is to remove the mounting ball and we're going to attach that to the inside of the center console using two sole tapping screws. Then we're going to reattach the arm to the mounting pod. We mounted the gauge pod inside the center console and ran our wires up. We left enough room so the customer can still keep his center organizer intact. Now that we've mounted our gauge and switch pod inside the center console, we ran our wires up underneath the dash. Ensure that anytime you're running wires, you're keeping all wires free and clear of any moving parts, such as your steering column, parking brake, gas pedal. Our next step is to mount the computer module with the computer module harness. We're going to attach the computer module to a factory harness using zip ties. Then we're going to plug in our harness. the gauge to the factory dimmer switch. We're going to do this by using 
using a wire tap in. On this truck, the dimmer switch is located right here. Access panel, you can easily pop off my hand and get to the wire. on the flat washer, the lock washer, and then the nut onto the bolts in that order. And you simply run it up and tighten with a wrench. Once you have the tank mounted, the 
next step to do is to run the hoses and wire to a burning the truck. On this truck, all you simply have to do is run the hose in between the cab and the bed. All the way down. Ensure you don't have any kinks or creases in your hose. The next step is to locate your factory fuel vent line. It's located on the inboard side behind your factory fuel cap. We're going to be installing our vent line adapter. On some make model of trucks, it has a full metal fuel fill vent line. You can use a supplied rubber hose to cut a section of the metal tubing and place this so you can install this, the vent line adapter. This is your factory fuel. This is your factory fuel vent line. We're gonna be installing our vent line adapter inside this rubber hose section. All we need to do is cut a small section out so we can place it out there and, and attach it by two hose clamps. As you can clearly see, all we had to do is cut out a small section about this size to install our vent line adapter. We also then tighten our two hose clamps to secure the vent line adapter. up position. It also says in and out is coming in from the auxiliary tank going out to the factory tank. It comes with a bracket that we will mount to the frame with rubber grommets to, create, to stop any vibration. The next step is once you install your mounting bracket is to mount the fuel pump and route the hoses. We came in from the auxiliary tank going out to the factory tank. We then ran our hoses to our vent line adapter and installed our hoses, the 3 8 to the 3 8 port, the 5 16 to the 5 16 port. Then we used our hose clamps to tighten the fuel hoses. Once you located the factory harness, you need to find the factory syndicated wire. On this truck, it is a yellow wire with a thin purple tracer. We're going to tap into it with the blue wire from the factory computer module using a quick splice tap in. How you attach it, you'll see an open end and a close end under tap in. You place the tap in on the wire that you need. We get the blue wire from our harness and stick it all the way down inside there. Then using a pair of pliers, we're going to lock it in and that'll give the signal to the computer module. Just tap it in. Check your wire, make sure it's nice and secure. Then you close and lock your tap in. Then you simply need to do is put all the wires back into the factory harness and you can secure it back with electrical tape. Next we will attach the yellow wire or the sending unit wire from a gauge to the yellow wire coming from the auxiliary tank. We do that by using a butt connector. Then the white wire coming from the switch is going to go to the positive leg of the fuel pump. The legs are clearly marked positive and negative. So the white wire goes to positive, then the black wire is negative. The next step, we're going to attach, attach the sending unit ground to the chassis ground. The way we do this, we attach the large eyelet included in the kit, and you can simply do that by attaching it to the bolt that we used for our pump bracket. 